All right, example four, it says use rationalizing. Now, typically when we think of rationalizing, we talk about rationalizing the denominator, that we're not gonna leave a square in a denominator. Well, here's a little trick that sometimes might occur when you're trying to solve for a limit. If I would use direct substitution right now, we'd have a problem because I'd substitute and have a four in the denominator and four minus four would end up meaning the entire denominator equals zero and that's a problem. But see, what I can do here is when I realize I have a square root, well, we can take the approach of let's try to rationalize uh, this value up top in the numerator. And the way that we learned earlier this year to rationalize is you multiply uh, kind of by the opposite. It's technically called the conjugate. You multiply by the conjugate here. So if I have a square root of x minus 2, what I'm going to multiply by is the conjugate, which would be the square root of x plus 2. What this will do is create a perfect square in the numerator. Okay, so that's what I'm multiplying by. I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same value, which means I'm ultimately multiplying this equation by one. So I'm not gonna change the problem. So I'm just multiplying by one. It doesn't change the problem at all. But instead of saying, okay, well, this simplifies with this. Well, that's true. They do simplify. What I'm gonna do is multiply across. And so whenever you have this set up right here, it's called the difference of squares. What's going to happen, it's going to create like this perfect square when you have x squared, or excuse me, square root of x times the square root of x, you get the square root of x squared, which happens to equal just simply x. That's the square root of x times the square root of x is x. And then you have uh, the square root of x times 2, which would be plus 2 square roots of x. Then you have a negative 2 times the square root of x, so minus 2 square root of x. And then a minus 2 times a positive 2, which is going to give me a negative 4. In the denominator, I'm actually not going to multiply this value at all. I should add a parentheses around that, forgive me. So I'm going to leave this as x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2. And so what can I see that happens? Well, I have an x plus a square, uh, uh, 2 square root of x and minus a 2 square root of x. And all of a sudden, my board went they're going really slow. Let me see if it'll catch up with me. Uh, so we need to simplify these values out. Sorry, I don't know what's going on here. Let me try. This value would simplify out with this value. And so now I can see that uh, not only can I say those values will simplify, but now I have an x minus 4 and I have an x minus 4 here. And so I could actually cancel out this factor, x minus 4, with this factor of x minus 4, which leaves us with 1 over uh, the square root of x plus 2. And so how can I solve this limit from here? Well, we can now use direct substitution. So I, I would just simply put plug in a 4 into my square root. So I have the square root of 4 plus uh, 2 in my denominator. And so the square root of 4 we know is 2. And so I'm looking at having here 1 divided by 2 plus 2, which is just going to be equal to 1 fourth. That's going to be my limit on this particular problem. When I look at this graph here, as I close in on the x value of 4 from the left side here, the limit as x approaches 4 from the left and as the limit of uh, as x approaches 4 from the right, from the positive side, the y value we're approaching is, uh, according to the graph, 0.25, which is 1 fourth. So now I'll have let you try this one again. You're, what you're going to need to do here is multiply by the conjugate, which would be the the quantity of x, uh, the square root of x plus one here. 